Grand Rising, everybody. Grand Rising. Look, I look a little crazy. Let me fix this. Cause it's about that time again. I'm looking real rough by the head. It's time to retwist. <sighs> My daughter got her hair done. I did retwist it. I just combed out her roots and put it in a bun. A couple of buns and some stuff up there. My son got to get his retwisted because his ain't quite long enough. Style it without uh, having to retwist it. But yeah, I'm trying to wait till later on in the month, maybe next week, sometime at the end of the week, I'll go ahead and redo it because, you know, I got to go to the temple, y'all. We got to go to the temple. So I'm putting up videos and pictures and all of that shit from that experience because I'm mad excited, yo. I'm so excited. Like, I'm excited, you know? Um... You know, we have church. You know what I'm saying? And the church don't really fuck with the occult like that. You know? But before the church became what it is now, you know what I'm saying? The church was full of hoodoo. I mean, if you go over to Africa and a lot of indigenous cultures and look at how they live. Superstition is uh, a part of their life, which is oftentimes associated with the supernatural and the spirit realm, etc. So, you know, it's always been a part of us. So, to actually find a... a I'm going to tell y'all what I told uh, Mother Wisdom. That scripture in the Bible, they say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Baby, it means something to me now, because I'm... I'm I, I'm about to go and fellowship and congregate with people of like mind. And ain't nobody going to be asking me dumbass questions like, do you worship the devil? Nope, I ain't got to deal with that. So, it's going to be interesting and I'm excited and all of this type of stuff. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get it crack a lack in and let's get it packing, packing. Let's talk about, see, this how people get cussed out, all right? But it brought inspiration for today's video. Therefore, I, I'm going to try not to cuss this woman out. Because this don't make no sense. So, I'm, I, I, like I said, I've been in a, in a lot of different spiritual groups. Not actively participating. Kind of just sitting on lists. I kind of just answer shit that comes down my timeline. That I feel like may or may not need my attention. So, uh, today... The question was asked, how do I know what to feed my ancestors? Um, how do I know what to feed my ancestors when I don't know what they like? All right, good question. Because a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, we have ancestors that may have passed away before we even became cognizant of ourselves. Meaning, we don't have no memories from the time that we interacted with them because we were so young. So, or, you know, you hear stories about this ancestor that you never met because this ancestor made a transition. Or, hell, you might have never met them, you know, before, you know, they transition on or whatever. So, in those type of situations, the question does become, well, what do you feed them? Let me tell you something. Magic is practical. Gonna keep saying it. Magic is practical. Magic is practical, Okay. If you don't know what to feed your ancestors, feed them what you ate growing up. Nine times out of ten, what you ate growing up, you know, unless you just had a parent that completely rebelled and stopped cooking and bought your ass McDonald's every day, that's different. But in that case, you know, eat what grandma gave. Now, two or three generations from now, that might not be the move. <laughs> Grandmoms don't cook no more. I don't know what the hell that's about, but that's the, hey, that's the world we live in. But, um, feed them what you ate growing up because that's what they were feeding you so that's probably what they were eating so start there as you continue to go to the altar and build a relationship with the altar and the ancestors okay you will eventually learn what to give them case in point tell y'all a story here's the story I had 
lit my ancestor out so you know I ain't really want nothing I just lit it so you know they could come through and, and, and chill and kick it with me you know what I'm saying so it was lit and I had ordered some food so I went to go pick up my food so this was like some uh, Korean or Hawaiian barbecue or something like that somebody had cooked it in the neighborhood and I bought a plate so I go to get my food I get my food and I pick it up I open it and I went through the room where I kept my altar okay the altar is lit so transmission is easily flowing right so I walk past the altar with my food and it's open and they said give me that chicken okay so let me explain that because I don't know about to take this the wrong way when they said give me that chicken it wasn't like I'm talking to you right now it's more of a like telepathic type communication like it's kind of difficult to explain but once you experience it you'll know when you start learning how to listen to the voice of God the voice of spirit and all of that you can start to differentiate between what spirits is talking who's talking is it the creative energy of the universe or if it's your um um your inner self your higher self like all these things have different voices okay so once you start learning that you, it, it, and it's not difficult it just takes time and practice and development so once you do that you know um you good so I'm walking past and they was like, give me that chicken. I was like, I know they ain't just asked me for my chicken. I know that I, I ain't hear that. That ain't what happened. So I closed my plate and I went back in the kitchen. And then uh I had I needed a fork and I needed something to drink. So I got those things and I walked back through there. You know, why would I do that to myself? I walked back through there, past that house again, and again they said, Give me that chicken. So of course. I had, and then, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a smart ass, right? Because I really wanted this food. So, I'm going to cut the chicken. I'm going to cut a piece of it out. No, they was like, I want the whole thing. Oh, and y'all greedy. That's how y'all feel. Y'all just going to take my whole piece of chicken. But that's what they wanted. So, they get, eventually, the spirits will communicate to you, okay? Eventually, they will. Um, I did talk about this. It's on my Instagram somewhere. I got to find it. If I find it, I post the link for y'all. I always say that and I never do. So, y'all better go to my Instagram and go find this shit. But, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do better about that. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. um, Yeah. They will tell you what eventually goes in there. When 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 y'all first start this, you know what I'm saying? First of all, I don't um, teach that you should just throw an altar up in your house. I don't teach that. There's a reason why I don't teach that. That's a responsibility. That is a whole nother learning process. That's a whole nother thing to go through. That is a lot of energy that you have to learn to properly utilize, control, and, 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 and get acclimated to inside of your space, okay? That is a portal. You got to learn how to protect it. You got to learn how to open it. You have to learn how to close it, you know? It's a lot of stuff that goes into that, so I don't recommend it. But once you get to the stage where you're comfortable enough to erect the altar, look, you ain't got to go and put all this stuff up there on that table. Without, you don't got to do that. That's too much shit, okay? A simple glass of water, a Bible, and if you need a picture for visualization purposes, pictures will be fine. But you don't need all that extra shit up there just because somebody told you or you seen something you like over time. Your altar will become the image of what you will perceive an altar to be. But everything on it will have a specific meaning to you. Okay? Everything on it will have a specific meaning to you. I don't I don't know why people do that. Like, let me hush. Um everything on it will have a specific meaning to you. And uh That's just what it is, you know. And, and you won't just have a whole bunch of shit just sitting up there and it's just sitting there, you know. That's kind of ridiculous. 
a little redundant. A little crazy. Just to have shit just sitting up and down the house and you don't know what it's up there for. Another thing people tend to do when they new, they go spend an elaborate amount of money on fucking fruits and vegetables to put on these altars and then this shit is just sitting up here going bad. Look. Come on now. Like I said, magic is practical. If your ancestors are utilizing the energy that is put on that altar, you will notice it by the food spoiling. If you go over there and that shit been sitting up there two weeks and it's still edible, then that means you is wasting your money, okay? You wasting your money. Stop doing that. A lot of y'all probably got ancestors that didn't even eat a whole bunch of fruits and damn vegetables. And you gonna put all that shit up. They don't eat that shit. That's probably why they ain't fucking with it. It might not even be that they, they, they not comfortable with the altar situation yet. It might be that they don't eat that shit. Stop doing shit just because somebody told you to do it. Feel the spirits that you are trying to connect with. Learn to listen to the spirits that you are trying to connect with. In feeling and listening, you will learn what it is that you need to do. Because once you actually... Your ancestors was not other folks' ancestors. You got to understand it. Everybody had their own way of living inside of their communities and their households, okay? So, that doesn't change just because they transitioned over and now it's this monolithic thing. No. No, 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 no. You might have had an ancestor that didn't eat meat. Okay? So, if you put some meat up there, they probably not going to fuck with it. But, you wouldn't know that because everybody in your family eat meat. But that's another thing as to why things like bloodlines and all of that type of stuff are important. So you want to make sure that you are actually listening to spirit and until you establish that relationship where you can hear and read the signs of the spirits that walk with you and your ancestors. Simple water. Water. Just water. Water. A plain white cloth. You know. Now, some people might do black. I wouldn't suggest you do black if you not used to dealing with a lot of energy because black absorbs okay it absorbs so if you not used to dealing with a lot of energy I would suggest you put black up there you want to go ahead and reflect some of that off until you know you able to learn how to actually wield that particular power but a, a simple cloth, some water, a Bible, you know, a lot of people be like, want to run away from the Bible. Most of y'all fucking ancestors grew up in the church. And uh, according to church doctrine, this altar shit you doing is the work of the devil. If you want your ancestors to be comfortable, to come to you, okay, you need to let them know that you're not worshiping the devil. And where you're asking them to meet and congregate with you is a sacred space and an expression of the most high, okay? You don't want to go up there and start putting all your goddamn witchy rooms and all this other shit they ain't never seen before up there and talking about come over here and talk to me. They not about to fuck with you. Don't do that. Real simple. Real practical. So, if... You have a regular altar and you don't know what to feed your ancestors. Easy thing to do is to um, feed them what you ate growing up. Alright, that's pretty much the whole point of this video, just to say that. Feed them what you ate growing up until they tell you differently. Alright? Um, now, if it's on your heart to not do that because... Uh, somebody decided they wanted to goddamn argue with me this morning because I said this. That's the food that's killing us. Just because your fat ass want to sit up there and eat fried chicken every day and not uh, take care of your body and exercise and shit and you got health issues don't mean that everybody do that. You ignorant bitch. That's that's what was in my soul. That's, that's what was in my soul to tell this hoe. But See, I need to calm down because I shouldn't let her upset me like that, okay? But that upset me. That pissed me off. That pissed me off really bad. Like, sit your ignorant ass down. I don't know. I don't know why people want to activate that Mars energy. Leave it alone, please, and thank you.
leave it alone so anyway um if, if, if you feel like you feed big mama fried chicken that she used to cook for your ass every Sunday is a travesty by all means don't do it anyway for those of you that actually want to cultivate relationships with your spirits and wants to please them um just listen to what they have to say the obvious thing to do is to feed them um The obvious thing to do is to feed them what they fed you because that's what makes sense. Okay? That's it. Simple as that. And as time goes on, you, you'll learn. Y'all think that these people with these elaborate altars and things like that, y'all think they just got like that overnight? No, that was a work in progress. That's continuously working and going. And because it eventually, you know, you'll cultivate your individual relationships with these spirits just like you do um, in life, you know. Everybody hang out at the dinner table, you know. But, you know, on Thursdays, I might go over here and see Uncle Leroy, you know. And on Fridays, me and Aunt Delisa hang out, you know like that so as you cultivate these individual relationships you know each one will have their own thing that they may want added to the altar all right and that's how this altar is start growing into these elaborate sacred spaces of just shit y'all done seen them altars they look like shrines some of them are shrines though there's a difference between the altar and the shrine all right but yeah so that's it it's real simple nothing complicated or none of that you don't have to complicate it also just because you make a piece of fried chicken for your ancestors don't mean your ass got to eat it all right this is for them it's not for you now it is customary for you to take a piece just so you know it's understood that what it ain't right by the way, y'all, I'm on my way to a doctor's appointment, but I keep getting turned around. I don't know where I'm at. Anyway, um, the food is for them. Like, okay, take a bite of it. You ain't nobody telling you to sit up there and eat no whole soul food feast if that's not what's in your soul to do. Um, the food is for them, you know. Um, of course. Anytime you venerate an ancestor, worship a deity, ask for a favor, anything, there is a level of sacrifice involved. So, if you're going to cook for your ancestors, and for me personally, um, sometimes I throw what I had for dinner up there. I'm not one of those people that give my ancestors food every day. You know. Um, so, there's that. Um, but November the 2nd, you know, for me, I go with the collective energy of the universe and that is the day that most cultures around the world, um, venerate their dead. So that's the day I do mine. So from Halloween all the way up to November 2nd, pretty much a sacred time, especially for honoring ancestors. Okay. So for me, when I do that, I, um... Whew. Lord, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, th then I cook them a big feast. Like, any of y'all that been following me for a couple of years, y'all remember on Facebook I had fried that chicken and butter. Oh my God, it was so good. Because I thought, why use vegetable oil? That's such a trans fat. And butter ain't that bad. Like, I cook with a lot of butter, I ain't gonna even lie. But compared to the amount of margarine and, and grease that I see most people use, that's why I use butter. Butter is a healthier choice anyway. So, I mean, it was pretty good. But that's the day that I do the big soul food feast for them and put the stuff up there that they liked. And some of this stuff, I fucked it up. Like, my um, my grandmama asked me for some buttermilk cornbread. Now, here's how things have changed for me. When I grew up, cornbread was not sweet. We did not have sweet cornbread. Cornbread was cornbread. And it was not sweet. Um, that's how my family did it. And when I go out into the world, 
everybody eats sweet ass cornbread which didn't make no sense to me because you supposed to take the cornbread and dip it in the collard greens and soak up that pot liquor with them greens because you eat it with your hands you know what i'm saying so you know and then it's sweet like why why my greens sweet i mean the hell so i didn't understand that but that's how everybody ate it so i fucked up last year when i tried to give my grandma and she did not eat that shit she straight up told me i don't want that <laughs> oh my god oh my god y'all that was my road dog that was my best friend my granny was my bestest friend i used to um she died when i was seven so you imagine how young i am i'm i'm a young 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 child and i'm having these visualizations of me and her rolling together in a drop top just on a road trip because that was that was my nigga if she don't get no bigger like that but she died when i was a young child so you know shit happens but um yeah, you just get them what they like. I do it on that day because, um, one, I mean, come on, let's just be real about it. I'm not fit to be cooking for spirits every fucking day. I'm, I'm not going to do that. They don't make sense. You know, if I feel inclined, I might drop a fruit up there. If I feel inclined, I might drop a plate of whatever I'm eating on the altar or whatever. But it's not something that I do every day. Acknowledge them every day, yes poor libations and not like i used to but it's good to you know make sure that if you got an altar up make sure that the water is fresh nothing on it is spoiled that type of stuff um poor libations outside you honor them you know real simple but it's not that complicated don't make stuff harder than it needs to be don't overthink things like it's very very simple y'all got to understand that this is not an instant process none of it it is a gradual process over time and things will be revealed to you as they need to be and it's time for my appointment so i got to go so y'all stay dark and lovely while spreading your love and light and i'll see you next video